Good morning, hello humanists. We are the highest being of human beings, so we can be proud of that. Why do I say that? Let's look at a fellow humanist, if she can get him on the thing. Here he is. Good. What is special about a humanist? Look at him. He is happy, smiling, enjoying the sunshine, clean air, and clean water. His biggest worry is to leave it like this for future generations. That's very important. Who are humanists? You have all kinds of definition. Bob gave a great elucidation yesterday. I'll keep it simple. <clears throat> a humanist, think for, they think for themselves about what is right and wrong based on reason and respect for others. Find meaning, beauty, and joy in the one life we have without the need for another one. Look to science instead of religion as the best way to discover and understand the world. Believe people can use empathy and compassion to make the world a better place for everyone. Me talking about humanism is like a kindergartner talking to the teacher to this audience. Bear with me. My only qualification is, ever since I was a little boy, which my wife thinks I still behave like a little boy every now and then, is this great leader, Periyar, from Tamil Nadu, India, a social revolutionary. He fought against the casteism, women's, and downtrodden people being put down so much he rose against them and fought all his life. And that is my only qualification. That fight still goes on. When you ask about humanism and organizations, you go into Google, it's mind boggling. Even the experts here, I'm sure, don't know how many blogs, how many organizations, how many different varieties are there. In 1952, in Amsterdam, they tried to bring together a small group, the International Humanist Ethical Union. And I met Levi Fragel a few times, and I talked to him. He's a great guy. And I really respect them and thank them this March session in the United Nations. They brought a resolution against the caste discrimination in India. If you think racism is worse, caste is much worse than that. I think it will come into the forefront and we'll hear a lot more about that. There are a lot of humanist organizations from A to Z, from Harvard to Stanford, and a lot in between. I just going to, I'm going, going to say just a couple of uh, organizations. I'm not promoting any of them. I like them all. That's our job, to like them all, right? The Humanist Society, they are doing a lot of work. Right now, today, Yale, they have a workshop for young people. That's really nice. We have to reach them, we have to teach them how to be a humanist, how to spread the message. That's really great. There are people from American Humanist Association here, welcome. Good without God, without a God. A God, if you come to India, you have to say thousand gods. Somebody saw all the infighting going on between the organizations, and there are small places where they don't have an organization. So they came up with a bright idea. Internet, come on, let's do it. It's called iHumanism. Anybody can join, and the most important thing is you're not restrained, you can write whatever you want. That's bad. But they are being positive to the most part, which we have to respect. And some people are influencing, and the internet is the medium today, right? If we don't use that, we are going to be lost. Tony is really helping a lot, that's good. 
everybody that helps inst the institute, I really thank them very much. Why do we have to have the institute, which Polkers started? Polkers wanted to be very inclusive, get the idea to everybody in different walks of life. And he started the Center for Free Inquiry in a small room that I visited in Amherst a long time ago. He brought it up so big, so big, that the people who he brought himself took it from him. I wish them well, especially with the new president coming next year. Hope the Center for Free Inquiry does something better. Why do we have to have the Institute for Science and Human Values? We are positive. We are progressive. We want to make a, an impression that will make people think. No matter what they do, at least let them start thinking. Stu Jordan, change the diapers, raise the baby, and now it's up to Tony to make sure it's running fast. And I'm sure she will do that. With that, we have great speakers, four of them. The first one, I met her in a county board meeting in Pennsylvania where she was enlightening them, quote unquote, not fighting, enlightening them about the tree, tree of knowledge. And she has been through everywhere, all the way up to United Nations. And if I start reading her resume, it will go on for hours. I don't want to do that. She's great. Let her speak for herself. Respect beyond the grave. Margaret, nice to have you here. Thank you.